During adult CPR, which factor has the greatest impact on survival outcomes? A. Early defibrillation. B. Deep chest compressions. C. Rapid ventilation. D. Maintaining an open airway. Answer, A. Early defibrillation is the single most effective intervention in cases of sudden cardiac arrest caused by ventricular fibrillation or pulseless VT. When delivering rescue breaths with a bag mask device, how can a rescuer best prevent gastric inflation? A. Deliver breaths quickly. B. Provide excessive tidal volume. C. Maintain airway with correct head tilt and chin lift. D. Ventilate continuously without compressions. Answer, C. Proper airway positioning and controlled ventilation prevent air from entering the stomach, reducing aspiration risk. Which of the following best describes high-quality CPR in adults? A. Compression depth of 1 inch. B. Compression rate of 60-80 min. C. Allowing full chest recoil between compressions. D. Ratio of 30 to 4 compressions to breaths. Answer. C. Complete chest recoil allows the heart to refill with blood, making compressions more effective. What is the maximum recommended interruption time during chest compressions? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 15 seconds. D. 20 seconds. Answer, B. Interruptions greater than 10 seconds decrease coronary perfusion pressure and survival rates. Which pulse is checked in an unresponsive adult victim? A. Radial pulse. B. Carotid pulse. C. Femoral pulse. D. Brachial pulse. Answer, B. Carotid pulse is most reliable for adults due to its proximity to the heart and ease of access. When providing CPR to a child with two rescuers, what is the correct compression to ventilation ratio? A. 30 colon 2. B. 15 colon 2. C. 10 colon 1. D. 5 colon 1. Answer, B. Two rescuers use a 15 to 2 ratio in children to deliver more frequent ventilations appropriate for smaller lungs. A victim has a pulse but is not breathing normally. What is the correct action? A. Start chest compressions. B. Provide rescue breaths only. C. Use AED immediately. D. Place victim in recovery position. Answer, B. If the victim has a pulse but no breathing, rescue breathing is provided to prevent hypoxia. What is the correct depth of chest compressions for an infant? A. About 1 inch. B. About 1.5 inches. C. About 2 inches. D. About 2.5 inches. Answer, B. Infant compressions should be about 1.5 inches or one-third the chest's anterior-posterior diameter. If an advanced airway is placed during CPR, what is the ventilation rate? A. One breath every three seconds. B. One breath every five to six seconds. C. One breath every six to eight seconds. D. One breath every ten seconds. Answer. C. Once an advanced airway is secured, compressions are continuous and breaths are given every 6 to 8 seconds. Which maneuver is preferred to open the airway of an unresponsive trauma patient? A. Head tilt chin lift. B. Jaw thrust without head tilt. C. Finger sweep. D. Oropharyngeal airway only. Answer, B. In trauma patients, jaw thrust avoids neck movement, protecting against spinal injury. When using an AED, which action is correct? A. Resume compressions while the AED is analyzing. B. Clear the patient before shock delivery. 
C. Dry the chest only after delivering shock. D. Deliver two shocks back to back before CPR. Answer B. Rescuers must clear the patient before shock to prevent injury and ensure proper shock delivery. Which condition requires immediate CPR rather than AED use? A. Asystole. B. Ventricular fibrillation. C. Pulseless ventricular tachycardia. D. Torsades de points. Answer A. Asystole, flatline, is non shockable. CPR and medications are the only treatments. Which action should a rescuer take if a choking victim becomes unresponsive? A. Deliver five abdominal thrusts. B. Start chest compressions immediately. C. Sweep the mouth blindly. D. Place the victim in recovery position. Answer, B. When choking victim becomes unresponsive, CPR is started. Compressions may dislodge the obstruction. Which compression rate is recommended for adults during BLS? A. 80-100-min B. 100-120-min C. 120-140-min D. 60-80-min Answer, B. 100 to 120 compressions per minute optimize perfusion without causing fatigue or injuries. Which situation indicates rescue breathing only rather than full CPR? A. Child with pulse of 40 per minute and no breathing. B. Adult unresponsive, no pulse. C. Infant pulseless, not breathing. D. Child with no pulse or respirations. Answer, A. A pulse less than 60 with signs of poor perfusion in infants children triggers compressions, but if pulse greater than 60 with no breathing, only rescue breaths are needed. The primary reason for rotating compressors every two minutes is A. To improve teamwork. B. To reduce rescuer fatigue. C. To synchronize with AED cycles. D. To maintain ventilation rates. Answer, B. Frequent rotation prevents fatigue, ensuring high-quality compressions are consistently delivered. Which of the following best improves survival in sudden cardiac arrest? A. Early for access. B. Early defibrillation. C. Oxygen administration. D. Rapid transport. Answer, B. Defibrillation within minutes of collapse is the most important survival factor. When delivering chest compressions to an infant using the two-thumb technique, the thumbs should be placed A. On the lower half of the sternum B. On the xiphoid process C. Just above the nipple line D. On the upper sternum Answer, A. Thumbs are positioned on the lower half of the sternum, avoiding the xiphoid to prevent injury. For a patient with suspected opioid overdose and no breathing but with a pulse, the first action should be A. Begin chest compressions. B. Give rescue breaths and administer naloxone. C. Apply AED. D. Place patient in recovery position. Answer, B. Rescue breaths with naloxone administration address hypoxia and opioid-induced respiratory depression. During CPR, excessive ventilation can lead to A. Improved cardiac output B. Increased coronary perfusion C. Decreased venous return and lower survival D. Higher oxygenation levels without risk Answer, C. Overventilation increases intrathoracic pressure, reducing venous return and cardiac output. What is the first action after witnessing a sudden collapse in an adult? A. Activate EMS and get AED. B. Begin chest compressions. C. Check pulse immediately. D. Deliver two rescue breaths. 
Answer, A. Immediate activation of EMS and retrieval of AED ensures rapid access to defibrillation. If a victim is submerged in water and requires AED use, what is the correct step? A. Use AED immediately without delay. B. Remove from water, quickly dry chest, then apply pads. C. Only apply pads to the back. D. Skip AED and perform CPR only. Answer, B. AED pads must be applied to a dry chest for safe and effective shock delivery. Which statement is correct about rescue breathing in adults with a pulse? A. Deliver one breath every two seconds. B. Deliver one breath every five to six seconds. C. Deliver one breath every ten seconds. D. Deliver two breaths every thirty seconds. Answer, B. Rescue breathing for adults with a pulse is one breath every five to six seconds, 10 to 12 slash min. Which action prevents fatigue when performing compressions for long periods? A. Lock elbows and use body weight. B. Bend arms at 90 degrees. C. Compress only halfway. D. Pause every 20 seconds. Answer, A. Using body weight and straight arms conserves energy and maintains correct depth. During CPR, when is pulse reassessed? A. Every 30 seconds. B. Every 1 minute. C. Every 2 minutes. D. Every 5 minutes. Answer, C. Pulse is checked every 2 minutes to avoid excessive interruptions. Which action is correct if AED advises no shock indicated? A. Stop CPR immediately. B. Resume compressions right away. C. Deliver rescue breaths only. D. Reanalyze rhythm after 10 minutes. Answer, B. When shock is not advised, CPR should be resumed immediately. What is the correct compression depth in adults? A. About 1 inch. B. About 2 inches. C. At least 2 inches, not more than 2.4 inches. D. At least 3 inches. Answer. C. The recommended adult depth is 2 to 2.4 inches to optimize perfusion without injury. If two rescuers are performing CPR on an adult, how often should they switch roles? A. Every 30 compressions. B. Every 1 minute. C. Every 2 minutes. D. Only when tired. Answer. C. Rescuers switch every two minutes during rhythm checks to maintain quality compressions. Which step must be taken before giving breaths with a pocket mask? A. Seal the mask and lift the chin. B. Deliver two breaths immediately. C. Insert airway adjunct first. D. Tilt the head back slightly, then compress. Answer, A. Proper seal and airway positioning are critical to effective ventilation with a mask. What is the primary reason compressions must be at least 2 inches in adults? A. To allow more time for ventilations. B. To stimulate carotid pulse. C. To create enough blood flow to vital organs. D. To trigger defibrillation. Answer. C. Adequate compression depth ensures circulation to brain and heart, critical for survival.